Hello, I'm Brigadier General Heather Pringle, and I'm commander of the Air Force Research Laboratory here in Dayton, Ohio. And I'm really excited today to talk to you about the Air Force Research Laboratory, what it is, what our priorities are, and how you can become connected with us as small businesses and partners in this wonderful enterprise and securing the future of our nation. But first, I really want to thank some of our partners here today. We have Mr. Bill Harrison, who, as of yesterday, retired from the Air Force, but he was the director of uh, small business here in the Air Force Research Lab and has done a wonderful job of furthering our relationship with small businesses such as yours. There's also a shout out to Miss Anissa Lumpkin, for all her efforts and energies in connecting us with the community, as well as we have Audrey Ingram, Ingram, John Owens from Launch Dayton, as well as Ryan Helbeck from Tangram Flex, and they were absolutely instrumental to today's success. So let me now turn to telling you a little more about Air Force Research Laboratory, what it means to me, what we have to offer this community, this country, and what my priorities are. So AFRL has been a part of the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base for many years, many years. In fact, uh, we had our roots starting out in 1917 as part of the Army, the United States Army and the Signal Corps. But of course, we've grown and evolved out of that. And what our mission is, is to lead, discover, develop, and deliver all things science, technology, and innovation to our warfighters. And what we envision is that our warfighters will dominate time, space, and complexity across all operating domains, whether it's air, space, or cyber. And so we really see the future as being more technologically advanced than today, and AFRL is absolutely the reason that our United States Air Force and our United States Space Force will get there. So let me talk to you a little about my priorities for this amazing research lab and its 5,000 fantastic scientists, engineers, as well as business professionals like Anissa Lumpkin and Mr. Bill Harrison, whom you've just met. Uh, so my first priority has to do with accelerating innovation within the Air Force Research Lab, and we'll be doing that through a science and technology strategy that uh, develops a vision for the 2030 timeframe. This strategy was written by the Secretary of the Air Force in April of 2019, and it has several imperatives that we're very excited about here in AFRL. The first is to develop and deliver transformational capabilities. These are capabilities that are multidisciplinary, cross-cutting, uh, across various disciplines. If you th are thinking of cyber or space or bioenvironmental effects, the sky's the limit on what technologies could be brought together to solve the very complex problems that our warfighters face. The second aspect of this SNT 2030 strategy is to change the way that we lead SNT, science and technology. The way that we're going to do that is through the stand-up of a deputy technology executive officer. That is, my right-hand person is going to be somebody who is dedicated and focused to the space enterprise and integrating a lot of scientific efforts across this lab, which extends, in fact, it extends all across this nation. 
We have offices in New Mexico, in London, England, in Washington, D.C., New York, the state of New York, as well as right here in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and that's just to name a few, frankly. Um, and we would love to connect you as the small business enterprise of this great state with all of them. Uh, the third aspect of the 2030 strategy is really deepening and expanding our s and connections with the community, with industry, with academia, and there are a variety of ways that we can achieve that. So as you can see, accelerating the implementation of this S&T 2030 plan is really important for AFRL to achieve the imperatives of the future force and what our future warfighters will need. My second priority for the Air Force Research Lab is to show our support for the stand-up of the United States Space Force. The way we phrase it here is one AFRL for two services. Standing up the Space Force is a daunting task, and frankly, we haven't done that in DOD since 1947. But we are very excited about this new opportunity and the ability to deliver transformational capabilities to further our ability to secure our nation's interests in this outer space. And what a wonderful opportunity it is. And so we are increasing our connections across the space enterprise, whether it's industry or academic or even within our Department of Defense or federal agencies such as NASA. We're also learning more about what it means to operate in space and trying to push the envelope about where we will end up as a nation in this wonderful domain. But ultimately, our support to the United States Space Force, AFRL, really wants to show how we can help them be more successful, not only in word, but in deed. My third priority here at Air Force Research Lab is truly taking care of our wonderful workforce. We have about 5,000 scientists, engineers, as well as business professionals, and boy, do they cover the gamut of technical disciplines. Everything from finance and contracting and patent law to biochemistry, robotics, cyber programming, and of course we have a lot of professionals who have expertise in space domains as well. I can't do enough as their commander to support their ability to innovate, to help them take the risks that they need to to advance the capabilities for our two services that we support. We are innovating and accelerating our ability to innovate and truly, this is why today and this week's activities are a part of that and are important to us to facilitate that relationship with you. So I hope I've given you a taste for how exciting it is to be a part of AFRL. And I hope I've enticed you to partner with us in so many different ways. I hope that you will connect with our AFWorks team. They've developed a really great way of connecting with the Air Force and the Space Force. And they've made it easier for you to partner with us the government. We know sometimes the government can be um, confusing and a black box and it's not clear where do you take the first step to partner with us. But I know that Colonel Diller will make it easy for you to partner with us and to find ways where your success as a business is a win-win solution with our success as an Air Force Research Lab. 
I'd also like to point out Anissa Lumpkin and Bill Harrison and all their efforts to open doors and to get out the information about our small business innovative research or our small business technology transfer programs. One thing that's been pointed out to me that's different from the past is that you as a business don't have to give up your rights to those technologies. You can retain some advantages for yourself and to grow your own business. And we want you to succeed and that will help us succeed in the future. There are a whole host of ways that we can partner together in the future. I've just named a few, but there are so many more. Another way that we can partner with you is through our partnership intermediary agreements and this is simply our institutes such as the Wright Brothers Institute where it's an innovation hub between Air Force Research Lab and businesses such as yours. They exist all around the country and so we look forward to welcoming you at these locations to further our PIAs. I'd also like to mention Another opportunity through the Manufacturing Olympics. Registration is open now, and this event occurs in October, and it's your opportunity to capitalize on additive manufacturing and show us the latest and greatest that you have to solve these problems and see the best of the best win at this competition. We hope you'll join us there. So in sum, I just want to thank you for your interest in Air Force Research Lab for your interest in partnering with us through these small business opportunities. And I look forward to what we can accomplish together to make this nation more secure. Thank you. Those were great uh, words from General Pringle. Thank you so much for um, offering up the research and development priorities and 23 strategies going forward for your defense community. Um, it's really important to ensure that you're aligning to the strategies of our research and development and that we're continuing to partner with small business organizations. So at this time, I would like to um, introduce Jason Rafji. He's the lead uh, program manager for AF Ventures, and Mr. Bill Harrison, who is uh, a lot of everyone knows Bill Harrison, but he's the current small business director and to retiring next week, and we're going to miss him so much. And so this may be one of his last hurrahs before before he departs. But I wanted to start out and uh, just have you, Jason and Bill. Uh, talk about what your roles are in our partnering community within the Air Force and how you're working to help transition technologies to our small business community. So Jason, you want to start? Awesome. Yeah, thank you, uh, Anissa. And uh, it's amazing to be sharing this time with you and uh, Mr. Bill Harrison, two uh, truly legends in the community and the interaction between small businesses and the Air Force. You know, at AFWorks, uh, the organization that I'm under, uh, it's a relatively young organization. Uh, AFWorks started in, in 2017 uh, and has evolved significantly over that period of time and just recently moved uh, into AFRL. And we're extremely excited about that partnership. I mean, talk about the connection uh, where AFWorks has been really focusing on empowering airmen uh, in order to help them innovate, to help them do their jobs better, deliver capability to the warfighter and being able to partner with uh, an incredible organization at AFRL who has done an incredible uh, amount of work in that space already. And I think, you know, from, from our perspective, our focus has really been on the external uh, community for quite some time. You know, how do we help to connect uh, real options from a solution perspective to the airmen who need them and distributing uh, that uh, network across the Air Force. And so 
for companies, for startups, for, for anybody who has a new idea in the commercial space. What AFWorks represents uh, from a bigger picture perspective is a way to get your idea in front of a lot of hands-on users. And so the, the way that we operate our model is by having a few different divisions at AFWorks. The division that I represent is called AF Ventures. And so we operate as the front door for the Department of the Air Force for new and innovative ideas to be quickly connected to those folks who might need them. And as General Pringle so eloquently said in the introduction, it sometimes the government is really a hard place to navigate. And, and our role in the establishment of App Ventures was to be that easy front door access belly button. It doesn't matter what your idea is, if you're developing the next great space vehicle, you're creating the next generation satellite, you're developing a supersonic uh, um, aircraft, or you are developing a new application for um, more intelligent uh, uh, um, grocery store uh, stocking of shelves. Uh, you know, we've seen an incredible amount of ideas and what we want to do at AppWorks is connect them with people who might need them. Um, and there's a wide range of needs that we try to represent at, at AppWorks and bring to the community. So uh, from our perspective at AppWorks, if you are a, a company with an innovative idea and you don't know the right person to go talk to, or you don't know the right way to enter into this, you know, uh, big marketplace, uh, we'd love for you to come over to AppWorks, share your idea with us, and we'll help connect you to the people we think best suited uh, to utilize your solution. Thank you so much, Jason. And Bill, did you have some words that you wanted to share with our startup uh, community today? Well, absolutely. Let me start off. Uh, you know, it's been a real privilege to lead the great team of small business here in AFRL and uh, wish the person they picked to replace me uh, best wishes. Uh, in the interim, work with great folks like Anissa Lumpkin and Bruce Miller, my deputy. Um, AFRL is incredibly small business friendly. Last year, we spent $2.1 billion with small businesses, about 500 million of that through the Small Business Innovation Research Program. The vast majority is really through our BAAs and other announcements out on beta SAM. And it's a great way, and we're always looking for companies to partner across the wide spectrum of technologies in AFRL. I uh, just saw the stats this year, as of last month, we're on closing another great set of numbers. We're at 1.9 billion in a few days now towards the end of the year to go, and hopefully we'll hit at least 2 billion again this year. Um, my team has a lot of tools. Uh, I have the Air Force Cyber Program that is connected to AFVentures. Uh, the Cyber Center of Excellence has awarded thousands of contracts this year at a much quicker pace than in the past, and, and we'll continue to do that in the future in partnership with AFVentures. Um, as General Pringle mentioned, I have the Air Force Tech Transfer Transition Program. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities there. Uh, one is uh, we manage all the intellectual property for the Air Force, and you can uh, access our patents. I'm going to give you a website. This is the tool. It was, is powered by one of our great innovation partners, the Wright Brothers Institute, uh, www afrlsbhub.com, a lot of great tools out there, a lot of great connections, and there's even a link for all our patents. Um, as part of the, the program, we also uh, have this great network of partnership intermediaries, again, here in Dayton, Wright Brothers Institute and Apex, and around the country, there's 17 across the US uh, that support the Air Force in many different ways. Um, one of the other things that team does is in terms of partnerships, we can enter into non-contractual agreements, such as cooperative research and development agreements, test agreements, educational partnership agreements, and my team every day executes and works with folks to do that. Um, the other thing that I would mention is you'll see more and more, we have a great partnership with the National Security Innovation Network. That's OSD's innovation arm. 
Um, it's a pleasure to have uh, nine people that work jointly for me and for Morgan Plummer, and they bring a great set of connections, a great set of programs, and a lot of things happening um, that just really bolster this economic, uh, this innovation ecospace that we have. So my team is ready and helping all the time. Uh, we're looking forward to the partnership with AFWorks now that they're part of AFRL as well. And we really want the small businesses to bring in those innovative ideas and change the world. Thank you so much, Bill and Jason. I'm really excited about the opportunities that are available and how the Air Force is moving into partnering with small businesses. And really, small businesses really are excited about that front door interface and making it easier for them to, to step through the front door and having resources available to help them be successful. One of the questions that what's the best way for small businesses to find a government sponsor? I hear this question a lot, and I, I know there's a lot of different ways in, that small businesses can, can take, but what, what's your take on, on the best way to help them find that, that do that customer discovery within the airport? So um, I can I can briefly talk about some of the ways that AppWorks does uh, this, and, and certainly I know Mr. Harrison has a number of of, of, of ways that uh, uh, AirPorel Small Business does. And as he stated, you know we're we're working towards bringing a lot of these things together to make it easier and easier and easier to access all these incredible customers. I'll tell you. The Air Force has the toughest problems, um, uh, hands down, uh, from a, a technological perspective, certainly, uh, but also from a work process perspective, from a services perspective. You know, we've got tough problems. And there's a lot of different resources that the Air Force brings to bear to help solve those problems, but we need ideas. We need your ideas to help us solve those problems. On the AFWORK side, there's kind of a few different ways that we help to connect real options to, to real problems. Um, one, of the, one of the most well-known ways in partnership with uh, the SBIR and STTR program office in the Center of Excellence is the uh, Cyber Sitter Open Topic. And with the Open Topic, we publish our solicitations three times a year. You can find out about this program through the Air Force uh, Cyber website, you can find out uh, and find links to it at the AFWorks website. You can also go on to um, the Defense Innovation uh, Portal, the DSIP website. So there's a few different ways you can access it. Um, but long story uh, short with that one is, you know, on the open topic side, we fund ideas that have traction in, in the Air Force. But you don't need to have uh, a solid understanding of who that customer is going to be prior to engaging in that process. The open topic allows for new ideas, any new idea to enter into the Air Force marketplace and to work within the system, once you're already on contract, to find uh, that, that Air Force customer while you're demonstrating the feasibility of your idea in the Air Force context. And, and really, I think that the great thing about this process is that we fund uh, this effort. So the expectation is that you're not going through this uh, understanding of the Air Force landscape and, and trying to work with a few different folks about how your idea may impact their uh, mission or, or what they're doing from a day-to-day a -day operationally um, uh, outside of your own capital. I mean, we know your resources are scarce. We know you don't have excess time. We know the scarcest uh, resource for small businesses and startups is time. And what we want to do is afford you some additional funding so that you can demonstrate that feasibility with a customer and take the time that that requires within the Air Force to do that. Uh, once you're inside, uh, we have events. We have collider events where, where an idea comes in and we collide you with MAGCOM representatives, these commands spanning the entire Air Force. We bring airmen together, we bring users together, and have the opportunity for you just to interact with a wide variety of potential customers. And then we also have, outside of our work with the Cyber and CIDR program office, we also have challenges. 
What these challenges represents are, are focused technology areas. We have a couple active right now. The biggest one is the energy challenge. If you're working on a product that impacts something in the energy technology sector, we want to know about it. And you can go to the AppWorks website right now, look for challenges. Uh, you'll find there a number of challenges that may meet your idea in the general sector perspective. The great thing about these challenges, Anissa, is that um, in the challenges, we bring representatives from the, uh, not only from the Air Force, but from our partner uh, uh, services and COCOM. For example, Transportation Command is a joint service across the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force who needs energy solutions. And so when you partner with us on one of these challenges, same general concept, submit an idea. We're going to work with you on that idea, and the intent is to bring some selected set of those ideas to the forefront and have them have airtime and space working with real customers who have real problems and really need solutions on the back end. Like I said, the Air Force has resources. As Mr. Harrison said, you know, Air Force spent $2 billion in this sector already. And what we want to do is we want to open up the pathways to access those resources so we can use your ideas to solve these problems. And our intent at, at AppWorks is to continue to bring the users who need that product and the customers who are going to buy that product to the table so they can work with you as early in the ideation and technology development process as possible. Thanks so much, Jason. So if I can, so if yeah. I can add to that, uh, in addition to all the great events AFWorks puts on, um, each of our partnership intermediaries has collider events. Um, COVID has created some challenges and some opportunities. One of the challenges is getting together face-to-face, -face, like in the past few, few years at Startup Week here. Uh, now we've gone virtual and we've done the same thing with those collider events. In addition, especially companies that are here in Dayton, there are a great number of professional and business societies that can help you network. And, and I can't stress enough that networking in my experience has been one of the great ways to, to find linkages, find end customers and, and actually empower growth with the companies. Uh, I'll mention a few of those, uh, women in defense, if you're a women owned small business, but actually uh, they're, they're very open and anyone can join their events. Uh, another great group that puts on an annual industry day is Dayton Defense. You know, feel free to go out to their website, get with Deb Gross or Ron Dexter. And, you know, they normally have a very big industry day in July. Of course, this year it got canceled, but look for it again next year. Uh, the Lifecycle in, uh, Management Center uh, also has a big industry day, Lifecycle Industry Day. It's usually again in the summer time frame. It was canceled again this year, but these are all great events. And if you're in IT and cyber, there's a great AFSIA chapter, on and on, is look for some of those professional societies, some of those business associations. Um, and when they have events and when people can get together, great ways to network, great ways to learn more about other Air Force organizations and find potential customers. Absolutely. Just great insight there. Networking is definitely key. So Bill, I wanted to ask you, um, so you've seen decades of change within the Air Force. And uh, I mean, even now we're, we're pivoting to virtual events. And so there's been a lot of change. And so we're able to reach out um, even further than what we've had before. But what, what kind of things do you expect to see in the next 40 years to bring? <laughs> well, that's a really interesting question. Uh, you know, I've used an analogy many times that, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, I really couldn't imagine an iPhone, and today I can't live without it. And to me, what's exciting is what people are working on now that I have no idea I'm going to need, but I'm sure it's going to be a part of my everyday life. Um, you, you know, 40 years is actually a long time. Uh, to, to put that kind of in perspective, even with the, the iPhone, you know, when I first started at the base, we were still using punch card computers. Uh, hard to believe that was 40 years ago. I know I've showed young kids uh, a punch card and they can't believe that that was the state of the art 40 years ago. 
Now we can't live without our iPhones, iPads. I've actually got a phone and two computers in front of me right now. I don't know how to live without that. Um, that is the great thing about AFRL. That is the great thing about being in the technology space is every day there's something cool. Every day there's something amazing. Clearly in the areas of cyber, artificial intelligence, uh, big data analytics, those are gonna be things that are gonna change the way we do things in the future, the way we think. Um, and, and I'm really excited about that future. I uh, wish I had a better crystal ball. <laughs> I'd buy stock now in those companies that uh, we're gonna deliver these new things, but it's a great time and I can't wait to replace the iPhone and all these computers and whether it's a chip or glasses or whatever, that'll be part of the excitement. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely exciting times, um, especially when you're working in this technology and innovation space. So Jason, I don't, um, as, we're, as we're starting to integrate into with Air Force and Space Force, um, do you see, have you seen any insights into how working with Space Force will be the same or different than working with the Air Force? Do you have any insight into that? I think you're muted, Jason. You're on mute. I apologize. I um, hopefully you can hear me now. Okay, perfect. Great, great. Great, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, with what I just said, that sounds like a good answer, and uh, we can move on to the next question. Um. So <laughs> I I uh, I uh, I think. Um, I think it's a great question. You know, the the um, space force, the evolution of the space force has happened. Fortunately, while while AFWorks has been around, so we got to see this evolution. And just like AFRL, you know, taking an all of department uh, stance. You know, we are one department uh, between the Air Force and the Space Force. And um, you know, our our approach, just like AFRL, has always been to be extremely inclusive. We've had a great relationship with the Space and Missile Center, one of the preeminent acquisition organizations in the Air Force until it moved over to the Space Force re relatively recently. And so we've been able to, to work with them and uh, in partnership with the Cyber Program Office on fantastic pitch events last year. They're doing another one this year. Uh, really uh, just impressed by the forward leaning efforts within the Space Force to engage with the non-traditional commercial sector. Um, the, the evolution of the Space Force goes hand in hand with the evolution of a commercial space market. And so, you know, to Mr. Harrison's point, he looks back over the last 40 years and sees the amazing technological shift. I mean, I'd love to get his thoughts on if he would think that a commercial space company would, would have existed uh, not only to that effect, but be the one responsible for launching new astronauts into space, the ones for, for being responsible for being the predominance of, of R&D uh, efforts for uh, the space ecosystem uh, for the foreseeable future. If you look at technological trends over the last 10 years, you can see an entire evolution of a commercial space market. And we've seen that with the companies we work with. We've seen an incredible number of satellite companies, of small launch companies coming through uh, uh, our front door with just incredible technology, with companies uh, who have employees under the size of, of 50 uh, employees. I mean, that's that's incredible. You, you look at companies now, we have one company we're working with that's 3D printing engines uh, for space for small sat launch, which is just an incredible feat. And, and we're super excited to see this evolution, but it really is one department at AFWorks uh, and partnership with AFRL, it's one department and we see a lot of the technologies that have applications for the Space Force, have applications for the Air Force at the same time. And so we wanna to continue to grow our approach to working with small businesses and startups 
expand uh, uh, and really bring in just kind of this incredible amount of technology that's coming through the Space Force on behalf of the entire department and maintain that relationship as we continue to grow as two different but connected forces. Absolutely. So let's talk about um, how small business are prime contractors that are Air Force prime contractors. And how do small businesses establish those relationships with some of our Air Force prime contractors? And do we have programs in place uh, to help with that as well? Bill? Sure. Um, many of you have seen my presentations where I talk about the cargo net strategy, and that really is connecting um, the technology companies to the primes through their network of suppliers and vendors. And I do think this is an area that could use uh, more attention. I know in the state of Ohio, Joe Zeese and others are looking at this and and, and I think more work and programs will really help in this space. Um, you know, one of the challenges I've seen over the years is our big prime defense contractors tend to integrate a lot of technology and they turn to the teams of other companies to provide that. And, and I think as we look more in time, there'll be some things that will transition directly uh, you know, those are going to be phenomenal things, especially out of the cyber program with the ability to move to phase threes. But then there's others that are going to have to get into that ecosystem. Uh, I have worked with a number of the primes. I'm working with LCMC to look at opportunities where they have tech scouts. Uh, some of the big primes do have really good tech scouting networks and encourage you to connect with them. Um, also in the transition, the COCOMs have tech scouts and actually have a full-time person, Terry Cunningham, that works with those COCOM tech scouts. So again, it's kind of back to networking, it's getting to events, and then, you know, how do we look at the supply chain more, I think is where some of the next steps will go. Definitely, definitely. So, um... One question that we have here is um, when it comes to understanding or getting more information on the Air Force strategy, the Air Force Research Laboratory strategy, and General Pringle touched on her uh, R&D priorities for 2030, what are some, um, some other ways for small businesses to really uh, hone in on how they align to those, to those strategies that um, the Air Force and ASRL are, are pushing forward? Uh, Jason, would you want to touch on that? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to defer to Mr. Harrison because we have been at AFRL for almost maybe a month, two months now. And so uh, I, I could talk a little bit about how, you know, we kind of advertise some of the stuff that we do, but I'd like for him to, to kind of answer this first and then I might be able to add some additional uh, insights. Good, good. Well, so, so there's kind of a, a myriad of, of ways things are communicated. Um, just like AFWorks, we use a lot of social media. Um, really pleased, especially in the Dayton region, how fast companies and all respond to, to things we push out on social media. Um, again, some of the communication is through the various industry days that are out there. There's a lot of virtual platforms. And, and also put a, a plug in that space of AFWorks and their fusion events. Again, those are great ways to, to draw uh, folks in and communicate. Um, and the last, as I've mentioned a couple of times, it's sometimes just being in networks. Um, you know, I, I've sat in various networking events by the societies, and every time I go, I learn something, and that creates other new connections. So I don't know if Jason wants to add a little more with some of the things with Fusion and um, challenge projects and things you do, too. No, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, sorry, the, the uh, AppWorks is really benefiting from a lot of the great work uh, that has come before us and then, you know, doing things to help be that connective tissue. Um, I'll give you an example. In the open topic, anybody with any idea can apply. However, we also put into that open topic eight technology focus areas that represent 
what we believe to be strategic priorities for the Air Force. And so they're aligned with AFRL uh, in the same form or fashion. And you can go to the solicitation, which is live right now. And so we're taking applications and proposals right now that align to these eight technological focus areas that are in those priorities for AFRL. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that those are the only eight areas that we're interested in. Uh, and certainly the Air Force knows that we will never know what the next Google is going to be, the next SpaceX really looks like. And so we always want to take your ideas, but we also want to distribute the, um, the problems that we have across the Air Force. So although we post these kind of key technology areas, we also post what we call mission focus areas. And, and those are both uh, supporting the CIBR program, but also all of the other things like the challenge events and the fusion events and the other things AppWorks has ongoing. And if you go to the AppWorks website, uh, you can quickly see the mission focus areas posted onto that uh, main page. And what those do is they represent uh, the more discrete, detailed problems that our users are facing across the department. And so we, we look towards developing technology to meet those strategic priorities, but we also have very tactical hands-on needs for companies to develop technologies against. And, and you know, AppWorks building off of these concepts and, and trying to help expand the networking that uh, Mr. Harrison has discussed uh, to this you know, digital type of environment to allow you as a company to access real problems and engage with those problem owners so you can better understand how what you're developing may impact their, uh, their mission needs. Great insight uh, from our business community and our startup community. I know we see uh, a, lot, a lot of times you see small businesses um, the, the, the federal limit is up to 500, but I've seen a lot of success for companies with just two people, you know, in their company or, or 50 people in their company. And you can see a lot of success in that. So I just wanted to close out today. Um, if you have any, any last words of wisdom for um, our participants that are viewing us today, um, such I mean, great impact that you have made in our small business community. And thank you for being here. And so I'll just leave you to have any closing words that you have as we go into our, our break here. So, yeah, I'd like to say a few things. You know, uh, the Dayton area, there's a great ecosystem here. Um, you know, I've had the privilege to work with a lot of folks in economic development, the Dayton Development Coalition. Uh, the Entrepreneur Center here has some phenomenal programs. and looking forward to their move to the arcade and their partnership with University of Dayton. Um, you, you know, others, Montgomery County has some great programs as does Green County and some of the other counties surrounding. Um, there's a lot of folks that'll help you with economic development. There are folks like Scott Korndike and Entrepreneurial Center will help you with the business. And also, you know, the Ohio P-Tax and the Ohio Development Center, great teams out there with lots of tools. And then our partnership intermediaries, uh, can't say enough about the great work at the Wright Brothers Institute and Apex, their programs. And, and if you're dialing in from around the company, uh, the country, Griffiths and AFRL New Mexico and Doolittle Institute and, and the BRIC, I mean, they're all out there, great teams of folks to help. Um, and I've not, never seen any of them turn down a question or not try to help. And, um, and it could be on anything. It's on business, connecting with us, how to deal with our bureaucracy, prototyping, uh, you know, making things um, uh, on and on. So, you know, reach out to the community. I also want to mention Jim Mason Brink, who runs our small business hub at the Innovation Center at 444 East 2nd, a phenomenal resource for you. Um, so please reach out and to my team, or what will soon, or what was my team's very soon, they're gonna still be here, Lisa and all, to help you. So thanks. Thank you, Bill. And thanks for everything that you've done for our, our small business community. Definitely a legacy that will be, will be missed. 
hope to carry it on. So Jason, any last closing words that you'd like to share? Just uh, you know that that uh, it's been an, it's been an honor to work with Mr. Harris over the past few years as we've stood up AF Ventures and, and all the work that we've had uh, in doing this partnership with AFRL and now being part of AFRL. It's really kind of a culmination of a lot of the experimentation that happened and really under his vision, running a lot of these different experiments to really access your company's ideas. I mean, in the last you know two years, we've expanded. The DOD on average and on the CIBR program, for example, takes in 16 to 20% new companies with new ideas every year. Uh, the Air Force is up to 70% uh, turnover in new ideas and new companies with new, new things and, and we're expanding. It's not contrasting or contracting the existing businesses, but we're expanding to a whole new set of businesses and really growing this program. And it's really building on the incredible work that the AFRL small business team has done over the past few years. And uh, certainly it's great to be here and we look forward to uh, hoping to continue on in this effort and, and be as open as uh, AFRL has been to date. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, Bill and Jason for being with us today. Definitely great insight that you shared. And uh, thank you to General Pringle for offering her words of wisdom for our startup and small community interested in defense. This is the time to definitely get in the game if you're in that, that tech focus and innovation business, because you never know what the Air Force is looking for. And we're looking for a lot. So thank you so much. And we're going to transition into our uh, our next session uh, starting at 11 o'clock. So go and, and um, refill your coffee and get back because it's going to be really exciting. Uh, uh, three women who are working, women who are working in the defense community in various small business um, and, and to being more of a veteran small business. So definitely come back. We're going to kick off at 11 o'clock. And so I hope to see everyone for our next session. <laughs>